So welcome everybody to today's Get a Life moment with myself, Lisa Davies, and I'm delighted to be joined by independent, independent, put my teeth back in, independent filmmaker, should I just add in, award-winning independent filmmaker, Marcus Marco. Welcome, Marcus. Uh -huh. Well, thank you for having me, Lisa. Brilliant. And uh, for people who maybe have not come across your work, who is Marcus Marco? Well, I mean, I... I came to filmmaking quite late, actually. I didn't make my first film till my late 30s. And before that, I had um, I'd gone around like a crazy route, really, of, well, I wouldn't say crazy, I'd say checkered. You know, um, I, I started, I did history and politics at university, mm -hmm. uh, wanted to, um, I went into magazine journalism. Uh, quite early in life, in my working life, in my early 20s. And this was in the 90s. And then at 27, I went to drama school. So I want to be an actor. So I went to Lambda. And as I was coming out of Lambda, uh, an internet business took off with my family. And I had a choice to make. Do I become an actor or do I go help the family with the business? And the family said, just six months, Marcus, and then you can go do your acting thing. And then... <laughs> Like 20 years later, I'm still yeah. running the family <laughs> business. So, but whilst I was running that business in the light, sort of late 90s, uh, early 2000s, I started writing and I joined an impro theatre company because I realised that my, you know, I could do an, I could do improvised theatre and run a business at the same time because it wasn't like long rehearsals. Yeah. And I just started writing plays and, I, and then I wrote a couple of plays. One went into the West End um, in 2009. And, and then it was after that play, so I was in my late 30s, someone said, have you ever thought about making films? So um, I, that's, when I, that's when I started making um, films. Um, Amazing, really. I mean, it just, I guess it's inspirational in the fact that it's never too late. It's never too late to follow your passion. And just well, because- I was always, know, yeah. yeah, I think, I think the, the whole purpose of life is, is a journey, isn't it? It's, it's kind of, if you, the moment you get settled in the one thing and you think this is it for the rest of my life, then um, I think things start to get stilted or boring or if you're always looking for something that, that might, and also, you know, sometimes, sometimes you're just not meant to be making films until you're 40 mm -hmm. or you're not meant to write a book until you're 40 or you're not meant to start painting and so, because sometimes if you're in that world of, of, of revealing or expressing your learnings about the world, right, as a writer, then you need to have lived before yeah. you can spill your guts out about what the world is or what you think the world is. So um, I guess, you know, for me, it was about, always, I was always heading towards something like that because I was writing plays and I was, you know, trained as an actor, did impro theatre. I just didn't think it was possible that I'd make films. And I did a short six month film course, um, like part time. And I realised that all the skills of running a business, all of my skills of working as an actor, as a writer, all came together for, for, the, the, for, the, for the films. And I know you're here to talk to me about a short film, which is I, on YouTube. Yeah. But, I, but my debut feature film was a, a film called Papadopoulos and Sons about a wealthy Greek family who lose everything in a banking crisis and they have to go back to a fish and chip shop and start again. And um, uh, that, that film is on, um, on iPlayer, BBC right, iPlayer. Okay. So if any of your viewers fancy that storyline, it's really, it's a family story. It's about how family comes together through a crisis and they learn to become a family again, having lost the mansion house. And that's on iPlayer, BBC iPlayer, it's called Pabadopoulos and Sons. So, but that was, that was my first thing. And then, then I made the, the, this short film after that, which is the thing that brought us together. Absolutely. But it is interesting, just picking up on that point of nothing is ever wasted if it's recycled. So all of that life experience, all of that being in the family business prepared you to start making award-winning oh. films. Um, Absolutely. And I completely identify with that. Sometimes you come to it a little bit later. I didn't write my book until I was in my about 42, 43. So you do have to have had some experience in order to be able to express that out into the world. So I completely identify with that. 
So yes, that is what brought me to speaking to you is that award-winning short film um, called uh, Two Strangers Who Meet Five Times. Now yes. I stumbled across this through, I don't, it just popped up on YouTube, but it was actually originally screened everywhere by the looks of the list in 2000 and two, 2017, 2018. But it yes. seems to have had a resurgence and it's now viral currently Yes. all over social media isn't it so for people who haven't watched it and i am going to share the link uh yeah. this 12 minute short film that as i said is award-winning had me in tears within that 12 minutes yes it takes you through a range of emotions yes. and it really examines the human condition within 12 minutes so tell Correct. us a little bit how you how did you come to write such a masterpiece well i it was, I just, I was, I was trying to get another feature film made and um, they take ages to make films because you, you've got to get the financing in place and you've got to get the right actors that will unlock the finance. And this is why it can take, I mean, you read interviews with people where they say it's taken 10 years or mm. sometimes 20 years to make a movie. Um, so I thought, well, while I'm waiting, while I'm trying to get all these things together to make my next feature film, I thought I'll make a short film. Because with a short film, you can do it at like a tiny fraction of the cost that it would cost a, 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 that it would take to make a feature film, but yeah. you're still using all the different parts of the process. Um, and therefore it's much, much cheaper. Um, and so I was kind of thinking, okay, I want to make a really good short film. Mm. So I, I thought what makes a really, Good short film and uh, I, I sort of looked at other short films and I'm a fan of short films and I thought well sometimes people make short films because they're like a section of a bigger film they want to make and yeah. I thought well actually I really want to make a complete story and, and you know as I as like some of my favorite stories like um, there's the snow goose by Paul Gallico oh, or there is takes me back to childhood yeah oh, exactly wow. Or the, or the Happy Prince, um, Oscar Wilde, um, or uh, The Selfish Giant, Oscar Wilde. You know, these are stories that, you know, we, I, re I had read or read as a child. And I do remember The Happy Prince by Oscar Wilde making me really cry, like, uncontrollably mm. as a kid. And then I read it again as an adult, and it just made me cry again uncontrollably. I can't read that can't read that short film that short story without crying there's something so like it just goes straight into your into the heart right mm. it's just right into your heart and so years ago I remember saying years and years ago when I was at university I remember always saying uh, my dream would be to create a short story like that 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 would that touch people's hearts really quickly in a short space of time. Yeah. So maybe that was kind of bouncing around in my head when I made Two Strangers Who Meet Five Times, because I do believe, I do believe in redemption, right? I believe in that re the power of redemption. And um, I think we're all good, you know, I know we're all in conflict, right? With our families, with people on social media, with people that voted Brexit, people who didn't, people, you know, we're always in conflict. And, and when you strip away all that, we're just human beings human that we beings, all want the same. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And, and it's our egos that are clashing often. So I wanted to tell a story that kind of was in that, because that's, that's what I, that's a lot of my writing is in that space anyway. My film on iPlayer is in that same space as well. Mm. It's, it's, it's heart led, it's, it's, you know, so, so, but then I, I did have, there was an incident at work where one of my colleagues was racially abused, like uh, outside the tube. And I did think, wonder what would happen if that person met that person again. And then yeah. what I wanted to do is play with the sympathies. So not everyone is totally bad. Not everyone is totally good, right? And I just wanted to keep that seesaw of, so of, because because what you when people watch that film, they're quite judgmental straight away. Who's bad straight away? Who's good straight away? And then they change their minds halfway through the story, and then they keep changing until the very end. And that's yes. that's why people people are so upset. That's why they get emotionally upset because it really challenges those stereotypes, doesn't it? Completely. And then and then by the end of it, you realise we're all human. 
right? Yeah. And and we're we're there's there's and I, and I, and I like the fact that it's this film is so viral right now because it because it, it's coming out of this pandemic. It's it's you know we're we're all we're all being forced to raise our awareness of each other. I think yes, yes, and and just be kinder to each other, regardless of where we're coming from or what our position is or what our pol politics is or what our opinions are. It's like, can we be kinder to each other? Because, mm. you know, that's the only way, that's the only way we're gonna all get through this, this yeah. thing we call life. Because, because there's so many challenges, right? There's so many challenges with the environment, with, you know, economics, you know, with, and obviously the pandemic, it's just forced everybody to kind of to 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 really ask what is important in life so i think i think there's something that's happening there with the film going viral it's kind of just touching it's something. timely isn't it it's really timely and anybody who follows yeah. any of my work even outside of these interviews because uh, my work spans from everything from the corporate to what i call affectionately termed lisa's hippie shit so everything in between um but they'll they'll probably have seen that i have followed sort of uh, astrology, astrological energies and also yes. you know, th this um, so-called age of Aquarius that we're moving into which is yes. much more tolerant expansive understanding yeah. of one another um, but you know you see such diversity such division and duality all over social media so you know like you say whether it's Brexit, leave or, you know, leave or stay, whether it's vaccines, have them or don't have them, yeah. whether you, all of that stuff. Well, it's about duality, everywhere. isn't it? It's yes. constantly, but, but constantly. we're all, we're, we're set up to be dualistic Absolutely. from birth. Yeah. And right, wrong. Um, and what what we're, what, what I think this film does is challenge that Absolutely. dualism. Because you get people that come to it with a real opinion at the beginning. Oh, it's going to be, a typical liberal and or oh it's going to be and then they change that you can see the comments on youtube people are like oh god i thought it was going to be this but it's not and it's yeah. really moving it's just about being human you know it's about, about being, being kind human. to each other you and know, i what, think that's why it's absolutely perfect for this time because we do have all of that du duality going on and it's really heightened right now yeah. and so this just cuts through all of that it's yeah, it just does. so beautifully expressed and of course the actors you know the uh, however you cast those people they just capture it well there's an, in there's an interesting story there lawrence who who played the um the sort of aggressive guy at the beginning when i met him like it just to meet because his agent sent his details and I really liked the look of him. And he'd done a lot of good theatre. And he said to me, he said, have you found the person that's going to play Samir? And I said, I'm still looking. And he said, well, why don't you try my friend Sargon? We were at school together. And then we lost contact for 15 years. And then we met at the National Theatre in London in the same play. I went, well, OK, I, I've got to have that guy in because it's mirrors the story in some way. Yes. Ways. Yeah. So 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 that's how they're both great actors. They they're both really, really good kind of quality actors. Mm. Um and the old the, the older versions of those two guys were were are exceptional actors as well. So we were, we were lucky with the casting. I, I shot it in just two days. We had these amazing locations and everything just everything did go really smoothly. And um, I felt very, very lucky. You know, you know. Sometimes when you're writing the story, you know, I wrote that first scene and I went, "What if they meet?" But originally, it was like, you know, I had that idea of of, a, of an incident at the cash point. Then they meet again, and then I thought, "Well, if they've met again, why don't they keep meeting?" And let's just see where that goes. And if they kept me meeting this way to the end, did they meet? before you know without giving too much away yes, so yes. that's why that's why i got the idea from just going well what if what if? so much of writing and you know this as a writer and and creativity is what if mm. it's just say well what if you know when you're improvising on stage or when you're writing fiction you're the, co the constant question is what if because yeah. sometimes that's where you get the surprises you know
and um the and terms beautifully and executed so obviously you know the viewers can watch the uh, the other film on iPlayer yeah. as well they can view the short film yes. on YouTube but what's next what's next what? in your repertoire what are you what I'm what's about your aspiration? to make well, I'm about to make a new film in June. I'm in the, I'm just in pre-production now. So pre-production is getting locations, building the crew, hiring the cast. Um, it's low budget, it's independent uh, as always. And it's, um, it's just really, it's about a husband and wife who are at the end of a very painful divorce who fall in love again, whilst oh. they're at the end of the divorce. I can already feel <laughs> I don't even know. I haven't even seen it. I can already feel it. <laughs> so it's about a husband and wife who fall in love. It's four days. It's four days. It's like their, their first day is their last divorce mediation. And they've managed to avoid going into court. That's what mm. we know. And they found a mysterious letter that said that, she, that they, they, it's in their handwriting, but no one remembers when they wrote it but it was written early on in their relationship. And they said, and the letter says that should they ever separate, they should do these things before they finally separate. And the husband is reluctant to do it because I've kind of reversed the roles. Mm. He's the stay at home uh, parent and she's the breadwinner. And he's taking everything. He's taking the house, the kids, her salary, everything and she's found the letter and she just wants to do the first thing which is to go for a coffee where they first met and and that starts this chain reaction of events that leads them back together again. and it's really a conversation between a husband and wife and and we and as we go through that conversation we start to see the re reveals of their past and there's and there's tragedy in you know, there's genuine mm. tragedy that we don't expect as an audience. And it starts to jolt the audience, like it will jolt the audience about what they've been through as a couple. And um, yeah, it's a really lovely story because it's just two actors. Oh, it sounds incredible. And I love that, again, you are challenging the stereotypical norms of what's expected. I love that. Um, and again, wearing my therapist hat uh, as a therapist, the whole, you know, human condition. Yeah. What happens? How do we interact with one another as humans? How yeah. do we get to the places? How do we navigate trauma in our yeah. lives? And how it's do true. we come out and, they, and this couple have had a really bad trauma. And, and it really is about, the, the, those four days is about the release of trauma mm -hmm. and, and what that does to bring them, uh, together and um but you know it's it's an exciting piece to do because most people that i know who are in the business said oh like just a conversation between two people is very difficult to pull off but they've read the screenplay and they were like surprised that well, okay you've this this has a chance of doing something interesting you know and you know, it's about that idea is about what what true unconditional love is mm -hmm. you know what is what is love between a husband and a wife and it really isn't about what's gone before you know it's it, often the pain and the trauma is what will make people and it will break people as well right yeah yeah oh incredible I, how difficult is it to be an independent filmmaker because I, it's really it's almost <laughs> impossible it's not yeah. just difficult it's really really hard because you're outside the system mm. so with with Papadopoulos and Sons I actually self-distributed my film. So I put it in 12 Cine World screens in May 2013, and you can Google the story, it's crazy. And I ended up with the second high screen average of any film in its opening weekend. And I wow. did it. And most people spend a million quid, millions on posters. And I just did it with 40,000 pounds and social media. And I ended up with the second highest screen average of any film in its opening weekend. Only Tom Cruise's Oblivion had a higher screen average than Papadopoulos and stuff. And as a result of that, the BBC bought it, Netflix bought it, all the, and it did its whole crazy, it did a hundred screen release in Germany, dubbed into German, it did the Middle East. And, and, and it's like, it's really difficult at the best of the time, 
but I've chosen a path. No, I actually, I would, in an ideal world, I would have had an agent, the people would have produced me, people would have come along and like done the normal thing, right? But, but now I look at the industry collapsing and I look at all the scandals and I think maybe at some level I've been protected, taken out, do your own thing, carry on, Marcus. It doesn't, don't, don't worry about what everyone else is doing. And, you know, and I, and I kind of love it. You know, it's really hard because you're making films with your own money. Yeah. You're making, you know, you're, you're alone. You've got no help. You don't have a big production company behind you. You are your own producer. But you know what? I love it. I wouldn't, and now I wouldn't do any do it any other way. I just wouldn't. It's what I love. So I'm making this film with with my own money, the wife and her house. That's what it's called, the wife and her house. And um, uh, and I, you know, I. It is hard. It's not for everybody, but it's just it's the path I've ended up on. And yeah, I mean, it's it's been the right one. Sounds to me like you are definitely following your passion and living your purpose. It, it, I mean, it just shines through. The passion in what you're doing just absolutely shines through. Uh, and you. and that, you know, that shows in your work. Uh, yeah. It shows in your work. Certainly the 12 minutes that got me to tears definitely showed me that your passion is, is being manifest on the screen. Mm. So brilliant I mean absolutely brilliant so before we wrap up as I ask all of my guests uh please share with us Marcus what is your top tip for life well I think you've you already met you said it which is to follow your bliss to follow your passion to you know your emotional state is like your guidance system and you've got to follow your joy what is it? Not, not your ego. What's in your heart? What is, follow what is in your heart. And don't worry about, we're so conditioned to, to, to take notice of what other people think of us or what other, or the approval that we might get from other people or family or friends. Just follow what you love. Do what you love. Do what you love. Every, and I, you know, I talk to, I do a lot of school talks and it's the thing I always go back to, you know, do what you love follow what you love and it doesn't matter what it is it will end up as an interesting life but yes. if you don't follow what you love if you don't follow your passion if you don't follow what's in your heart whatever it is right and trust right if you want to be a footballer and it doesn't work out for you in football keep following your passion because it might take you into something else that's related to football it might take yeah. you to coaching or sport therapy or whatever it's like whatever your dream is don't ever give up because it might be taking you to something else. So it never worked out for me as an actor. But for a reason, because I was meant to be a filmmaker, but I was meant to do enough acting to understand how to work with actors. Yes. So when I became a filmmaker, I knew that part, if that makes sense. So always follow your passion, follow your passion. That's all you've got to do. And trust, just trust that things, even when things are going, what you think badly, they're often in disguise a bridge or a doorway to where you need to be. And you've got to trust. Very wise words. Thank you so much for sharing time with us today. I will share the links to the films and I wait with bated breath for the new release of your new film. Thank you so much for spending time today, Marcus. Thank you, Lisa.